Text data can be quite messy, but Python and Pandas can make it really easy to clean this data up and make it quite manageable for your data analysis project. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use these string techniques to clean up our data, and in many cases, chain this with multiple other techniques to improve the quality of our string data. Let's get started. So to begin, we have our notebook here. I'm going to begin by importing Pandas, and we're gonna start in our basic string methods. So I'm generating my data table from this dictionary, we have random white space at the beginning of some of these strings. We have inconsistent casing. We have strings that should be integers or floats. And so we're going to address all of this over the course of this video. If you run into this data table, you can see that it looks kind of typical. Maybe we have some issues with our headers. And if we look at DFID types, you can see that we have object data type, which essentially is Panda's version of string data type. And so with this, we can begin doing a lot of different work. What I wanna first do is look at how we can improve the cleanliness of our data frame columns. So to do this, we're going to chain a couple of different string techniques together. So first you're going to access the columns by using the df.columns accessor. And then we're going to use the string methods by first calling string or str. And then we have access to the string methods such as lower and strip. So first I'm gonna begin with lower, and this will allow us to convert all of the column headers to lowercase. Note we can use R strip or L strip, but by you calling strip, it will remove the white space at the beginning and end of our strings. And now we have cleaner columns, and that is updated the df.columns attribute. Next, let's look at the amount coffee. So before we chain these methods, let's just look at the output here. And you can see that in this column here, we have inconsistent white space at the beginning and end of our words. Also, our units are in all lowercase. So let's say we want to use title case in which the first letter of this string is capital, and then the rest would be lowercase, as well as addressing this white space. So we can uncomment these lines here, run the cell, and you can see that we now have a much cleaner instance for the amount of coffee. And these are essentially making instructions for an adulteration video that I was making. In another case, let's say you want to use all upper. So we could do the same thing and run this, and this will now convert our is adulterated to upper. So let's say we wanted to make sure that all the responses were all uppercase instead of a mixed case. And this is again, quite easy by chaining together many, many of these basic techniques. Next, let's convert the strings to numerical data types. In our per coffee, our data types are object data type indicated by this O here. And we know that this should be a float or integer data type. If you look at what these values truly are, you see that these are all numerical values, but because of the way we entered the data, they came in as an object data type. And although this is not technically a string method, it is a good technique to accompany your string methods in case we ever have to deal with this. And I'll show you a practical use case where this is indeed what happens. And so we're going to use the df.percoffee to call this column and then use the as type float or as type int to convert this data type there. And you can see that the data type changes to float 64 when we use the float argument. And if we switch to the integer class, we will get our int 64. There are several other options there, but this is what's possible by using the as type method. So next, let's begin extracting some of the numerical data from our string data type. In this case, we're going to use regex. So we have our SID column, and you see that we have a string coffee followed by the underscore, and then a number. We have 100, 090, 080. So let's say we want to split out the numerical data from this string here. And so we're going to first comment some of these lines out so we can see what's going on. And when we run this, you see that we're just getting our messy data out. And so first let's use the str.extract method. And this is a regular expression here where we're just gonna get all of the digits out. And this plus sign means one or more. So this is gonna to continue to look for a continuous string of digits. So when we run this, we're going to just extract out the numerical data here. So you see that this coincides with each of these values there. And then if we use the dot as type float, because you can tell that the D type here is object, we can convert this to our numerical data. Now we have a new column where we pulled out the numeric data from this coffee underscore number. But let's say we wanna do this without regular expression. How can we do this? Because sometimes regular expressions can be quite confusing or your data does not need to have a regex 
in order to perform this analysis. So one thing we can do is something very similar. So let me show you here. Let me comment out the as type and this here. So the biggest difference between these two techniques is that we have our string.split instead of string.extract. And we're going to split on the underscore and then set the expand to true. When we do this, we're going to get this two column data frame in which column zero is coffee and column one is this number data type. If you use the dot D types, you see that we still have two object data types there. The next step we're going to do is just select column one simply by using the square brackets and the one. And now we have a numeric data. So you can see that we're still dealing with string data. This data is still not clean. It carries all the white space that was present before. And then lastly, we're going to convert this data type with the white space to a float data type. When we do that, we now have our clean float data and we can store this as a separate column if we wanted to, which we've already done here. And this will give us the same data. So really it depends on how complex you need the solution to be. Generally, the simpler, the better. This is likely going to be more robust as this is looking for digits. But if you know that all the data has the same syntax, this is equally right as well. So let's get to a slightly more advanced technique when it comes to splitting these data. So in this advanced technique, we're going to still use the .str.extract method, but let's say we want to generate two columns, one that's called the product for the coffee, and then the other, which is the percentage of coffee, 100%, 90%, 80%. We can also do that using the extract and these capturing groups in which we're going to look for a string of continuous characters and a string of continuous numbers. And then we're also going to use that expand equals true to separate them out. So when we run this cell, we get this small data table where the first column is product and the second column is percentage. And so now we've separated them out and we can then take that same argument and assign that as two separate columns in our original data frame, one called product, the second called percentage. Then in the next line, we're going to set the percentage data type to float. And when we do that and preview the data, you see that we now have our product and percentage data. So in this video, we covered a number of ways that we can clean up our string data, sometimes just splitting it out and addressing white space, other times actually splitting it out and separating out the numerical information from the string data. There are many more things we can do. If you want to understand how we can deal with missing space or empty data frames, check out these videos also in the description. If you want more information about certain techniques such as merge, concatenate, and join, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what else you want me to do down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.